Hey, Peppin. Yo, yo. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about uh, baseball. Uh, oh, wait, like three strikes, you're out? Exactly. Or like when you get the you get the round ball and you throw it across the diamond to the other man. Actually, speaking of out, I saw this one thing where this coach got all mad and stuff because the guy cheated and then he, he threw a fuss, like a fuss or a fit or whatever the word is. And he <laughs> threw a fuss. He, he, he got kicked out. Oh, they ejected him from the game? It was actually pretty cool because he was a coach and he's like, do coaches here really get kicked out? I yeah, that's that's kind of their job, but um, if a player's going to get kicked out, they step in and get themselves kicked out instead. And that reminds me, did you know I've been kicked out of places before? Well, it kind of seems so. You're, you're a bit of a ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need to talk. Bit of a ruckus? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Welcome back. So glad you guys are here today. I am here once again with my best friend, Nate. How's it going, Pepin? Doing good, doing good. How about yourself, Steve? Not too bad. We do have on a very special guest today. You know, we I've had on so many different people that I know, um, so many people that I'm related to. And once again, we are going to have on my sister, Beth. How's it going, Beth? It's going good. Now, this is a different sister than the other one, so... For, for those paying attention... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nathan, very good. <laughs> Beth, Beth is indeed not the same person as Sasha or Nick or my mom. They're all different people. You know, your mom and Nick, I get confused sometimes, but <laughs> Sasha, she stands out. Well, and I'm sure Beth will stand out as well. Absolutely. So, um... <laughs> Is, let's uh let, let's set the stage a little bit um beth i know you're a rebel and you <laughs> love to get kicked out of places how many places have you been kicked out of uh probably like three or four three or four so is this like yeah. like you're in a library and you're talking too much or is this like like you were like banned from these places oh no, no no one one place i was definitely banned from oh my goodness and most recent i say probably most recently I was kicked off of a bus in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> How, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're on a bus, and they threw you off into the desert? No, it was, okay, let me set it up. It was late at night, and they have these, like, double-decker buses in mm -hmm. Las Vegas, mm -hmm. okay? And we had just seen the Chris Angel show, Okay. Ooh. So we're leaving the pyramid, you know, the big I can't, the Luxor Hotel, and you have to get these passes to go around the Las Vegas Strip. So we all get on, me and two other friends, and we're both a little intoxicated, and we all of a sudden we're sitting on the top deck, and the guy just says, "Everybody off the bus right now!" <laughs> He stopped the car, or I mean, excuse me, he stopped the bus, and he just kicked everyone off. And we're all wondering, why are we getting kicked off this bus? There's no reason, and people got very angry. Well, it was the end of the guy's shift. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing anything wrong this time. So it wasn't because I, of you. No, it was just because he decided he just wanted it. So even when I'm not trying to get kicked out of somewhere, <laughs> I get kicked off. Of a bus. He kicked off so three said, layers worth of people because it was the <laughs> end of his shift. This is the end of my shift. And we all got off and just stood there and then just started walking. <laughs> that's I, that's not very, I don't know. That's like a, a doctor treating you for surgery or giving you giving you surgery. And then halfway through, like, uh, I got to go home and then my shift. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if you get paid the same thing that a surgeon gets paid to be a bus driver down there, I'm moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. I, I can't imagine you ever getting kicked out of anywhere, Nate. It, it's kind of true, to be honest. I've not really been 
kicked out, kicked out. Um, but I do have a story of getting kicked out, which it'll, it'll make sense. Is so, this metaphorical or literal? Uh, it, it's it's literal, I guess. So, so I was back in like back in high school, I was sixteen, seventeen. Uh, I had a girlfriend, and we decided to go to Home Depot. And <laughs> hold on, <laughs> how did this? Oh, oh my goodness! How did this unfold? Hey, babe, you want to go on a hot date? I got a Home Depot gift card. <laughs> well, I, I needed something. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure what it was, but it's something dumb like a, a bike lock or something. Okay. Okay. Home Depot, the best place for bike locks. Yeah. So we uh, we get in there like four o'clock or you know four thirty or something, and we're looking around. And we can't find the bike lock. It may have been something else, but let's say a bike lock. And it's, it's something that should be easy to find, but just can't find it. Looking, looking, looking. And my girlfriend is like, "Babe, babe, j- just just find someone to help you." I'm like. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I don't need directions. And she's like, so as we keep looking, she's like, no, babe, get somebody right now. I'm like, okay, I'll get somebody. So you think it'd be easy to find somebody because every time I go to the Home Depot, people don't leave me alone. It's like I go into any section, people are like, you're like, hey, do you need any help? You need any help? You need, hey, any, help? I'm need like, any plywood? I'm like, no, I don't need any wood. <laughs> Go on. So, so we can't find anybody, and it's getting really annoying. But eventually, we, fi- we find somebody. So I go up to him, and I'm like, hey, sir. Um, I didn't say sir. Hey, we're looking for us a bike lock, and uh, we can't actually find one. Could you help us out a little bit? And he's like, sir, I get here at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I've had a very long day. I, I, it's the end of my shift, and I don't like how you people do this to us. I have a family to go to, <laughs> and it, it, it's it, it's the end of my shift, and it's it's not right for people to, for like you to keep us up. I need to go home. We all need to go home. I need to see my family. I've worked hard. I've been. It's been a long week, sir. I need to we, you to leave the store now. And wait, wait, was it was five o'clock? It's like four o'clock or five o'clock p.m. <laughs> you all need to leave now. It's the end of my shift. Well, so me and my girlfriend kind of look at each other we're like, uh, okay, and we kind of, we don't say anything really, we just kind of walk off, and we're incredibly confused, like, why was that guy being such a jerk? Why, what was he doing? And uh, so we decided, ah, screw it, we're just going to go to Walmart across the street. So uh, we started kind of going to leave, and then this kind of teenager type guy, he was, he was an employee, you know, kind of younger. He's like, hey guys, uh, just so you know, we're closing now. And then the lights start shutting off. And it's like, uh, really? <laughs> Four or five in the afternoon? <laughs> did you happen to go? Did you happen to go on Christmas Day? No, no. This was just a regular day. Like, it's a weekend day, too. So you think it would be open? I don't know. Maybe it was they were closed early on Sundays. Between you and Beth, I've never, I've never heard so many people get kicked out of places because they were closing. This guy didn't just kick us out. He made us feel really bad. <laughs> did, did you feel really bad, Beth? Uh, no. <laughs> I was intoxicated. Oh, so. fair, fair. <laughs> but it was the I end of a shift. Feel... I think I just went and like played a slot machine, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, that's always a good option when in Vegas. Now... I I have heard rumor, Beth, that you were you went to a private school. Yeah, I actually went to private school my entire life until um, my junior year in high school. So I was very sheltered, as you could imagine. Oh, for so sure. So even well, even now, like my daughter will ask me to help her with math. And I don't know how to help her with things or like science homework. I always tell her I was taught that God created everything. So I don't know any of this. <laughs> well, to be fair, math nowadays is really weird. They do it's, math really weird ways, and they don't care if you come up with the right answer or not. You have to be doing it their way. Yeah, it's very annoying. I hate it. Yeah, the, so. the, the focus is more on the method of doing it than it is the solutions. Mm. Uh, that, that, yep. It's kind of like that in school anyway, a little bit. I mean, 
show your work, and if you didn't show it, you wouldn't get credit. But wait, you only went until junior year of high school. What what happened in junior year of high school? Well, it was... Let me uh, kind of set it up. Is um, The school that I went to was actually run by um, my mom's um, brother-in-law. So my uncle and my aunt and... Pretty much, I kind of got to go to school there for like a deep discount, <laughs> so I could. And and they had like before and after school care. So when I was younger, it worked out great for them, and it was good. But then, once you hit ninth grade, they made you go through this like interview to go to school there. So it's like you're fine up until eighth grade, but then you have to have an interview even though you've already been going here for like eight years we're going to interview you now <laughs> what, are they making sure you are properly indoctrinated <laughs> well, i don't <laughs> <laughs> and they interviewed they interviewed like my mom and um from the get-go they kind of like made it seem like my mom was just this single wayward mom who they wanted who had you know a a daughter who I don't know everyone coveted it was a little creepy to be honest with you very creepy <laughs> wait so all the schools <laughs> wanted you so you get like had to go to interviews no I think they were like oh your daughter's wearing short skirts you know what that's gonna get you like oh, <laughs> I see. like that sort of stuff yeah so you were a rebel uh yeah well we'll get to that <laughs> so I would say it was so what was interesting is that my uncle was also my algebra teacher. <laughs> Go figure. He was also the principal and my algebra teacher. And once in a while taught, you know, uh, economics. Oh, <laughs> you never goodness. knew who you were going to get. Many hats. So, so it was the last day of 10th grade. You know, last day of school, everyone's like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. You know, you, I had to sign my algebra test. You know, you had to, sign, first, you had to write your name you know, on your paper. And so I wrote the name on my paper, I guess, and we, I went down to like, clean my locker out, and I was with my friends, and it was awesome. Now, prior to this, I was dating someone who the school did not approve of because he was kind of like a major rebel. He, like, flooded the school. He did some bad stuff. You like, he stuck Donnie a garden. Darko? <laughs> he, stuck, <laughs> he, stuck a, <laughs> he stuck a garden hose in, like, the new edition of the school and, like, ruined it. Oh my and goodness. they didn't realize it was on for like the whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> he unscrewed all the light bulbs. <laughs> Dastardly things. So they knew I was dating him. So at the beginning, I should back up at the beginning of 10th grade. It was my annual interview. You had to have an interview. And so I went in this room and there's like the board of elders. Like... <laughs> This sounds more no. and more like a South Park episode every single no. day. Or like a cliche no, Disney was... movie. <laughs> the Board no, of Elders. It was really called the Board of Elders. And this Board of Elders consisted of my uncle, <laughs> <laughs> um, the Reverend, and some other guys, uh, I don't know, like, other elders. No, I don't know. Notable elders, yeah. Yes. Old people, okay. And they never interviewed me and my mom together but this time they inter they interviewed my mom separately and then they're like all right you come in here like it's almost like a parole hearing or something <laughs> so i go not like i know i know nothing about that i swear and i go in and they sit me down and they said like we've had to talk we've had to talk with your mother and we don't think that you should be dating you know this person anymore and blah 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 <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, just a quick second. How did your mother feel about this? <laughs> what? How did, how, did, how did your mother feel about this? Did, was she on the um, side of the elders? No, but she was like, hey, my kid's been going to school here the whole time. You're my own family. How can you, like, you know, tell me how to raise my kid here? You so know? that's your mom's brother? My mom's brother-in-law. Oh, so my okay. mom, so my mom's sister is married to him. Okay. So... Anyways, uh, they tell her all this stuff. They say she shouldn't be dating him, blah, blah, blah. My mom's like, whatever, you can suck it. Well, she didn't say that. But <laughs> suck it, elders. <laughs> <laughs> but 
she just told them politely, like, look, I have control of my daughter. They told my mom, your daughter's going to get pregnant. She's going to end up like a, a teen mom. I'm not even making They actually said, you're, you're going to be a teen mom if you continue your ways. <laughs> a teen mom. I hope that wasn't a threat. Well, if, no, they were what, actually, what awesome. this was actually an interview, little did she know, to be on Teen Mom. <laughs> She was going to be the pilot episode of Teen Mom on on uh, MTV. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, I, it's kind of sad. I actually watched that show. <laughs> You're gonna be a Teen Mom. Uh, you know, the theme song I just feel. Starts. I feel sad that I never that I never got to be on the show. Just kidding. <laughs> you never lived up to their expectations. No. So they told him, you're going to be a teen mom. You're going to, you know, you're gonna, my mom said, I have control of my daughter and I don't ever want you talking to my daughter without me. So it kind of left on a sour note, you know? So uh, then school started for the year and everything was great. I was still dating this person and he had actually gotten kicked out of the school for flooding the school. <laughs> Because okay. they found out it was him. I think I, I can't remember how they found out, but I think it had something to do with like someone like they had like someone defecated in a bag or like something totally <laughs> crazy. Wait, like I, I honestly don't remember. I what does that to have to do it. with your boyfriend? Your boyfriend. <laughs> well, I think my boyfriend was the one who did it, and they oh, found oh. it or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're like this. This all adds up. Now I see who used that hose. <laughs> like I made some poor decisions. I really, looking back now, I'm like, why did I even? Do this? <laughs> there were like, hundreds of dollars I mean, worth of damage. A, you're gonna flood a school, and then you're going, and not only that, like I think he like he he got to go to school there for, for like discount. Like they give out all these discounts. Like they got this discount. To, like sounds like you all parents, had a group on. Oh, if it's <laughs> If his parents would clean the school at night, you know, uh -huh. like with a mop, with a mop or whatever, then they could go to school there for cheap. With a toothbrush. So I think that's so I think that's how we got access to the school in the summer. Or I don't know, but anyways, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so school went along great. Everything was fine, and it was the last day of school. So I had the algebra test, and I'm cleaning out my locker. And my friend, one of my friends, said to me, "Hey." Your uncle wants to see him, I mean, see you up in the office. And I'm thinking like, oh, I forgot to sign my algebra test or, you know, I forgot to do something. And I had been dating this guy for, I say boy now, but I'd been dating this boy for like a couple of years at this point. So it was pretty like I was in, I, I was in that stage where I'm like, oh, this is a relationship and I'm going to be this person forever and it's going to be wonderful and, you know, a dumb and naive sort of part of life when you're in high school everything lasts forever and, <laughs> and i went up to the office which was next door to the reverend's um office as well and when i went to open my uncle's door the reverend opened his door and he came in behind me and he closed the door uh oh and i was like oh, why are they closing the door like this is so weird and so i sat down <laughs> i sat down and i said and they said uh, i they both looked at each other and he, the reverend sat down next to my uncle and the reverend said, we have reason to believe that you're fornicating. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, had they heard about his hose. <laughs> <laughs> and so I kind of sat there cause I'm like, okay, yeah, I am in my head, but <laughs> how do you like know? <laughs> 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 like, I'm in my head, I'm like, how do they know? They're just assuming. They don't actually have any evidence, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just sat there for a second and I said, well, I think we should call my mom. <laughs> what everyone <laughs> says when they get accused of fornicating, let's call my mom. <laughs> I think I think my mom can shed some light on this. <laughs> I've been accused of having sex, but not of fornicating. I mean, for, for, fornicating is a very specific word that, I don't know. <laughs> 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 so you know all you know you're fornicating so i was like okay i think we should call my mom and they're like and that's not all. that's not all i'm like it's not like <laughs> and they like is there something else i don't know and, and we have reason to believe like it's like almost like an interrogation like 
we have reason to believe that you're also on birth control pills. And I'm in my head, I'm like, smart decision, but if you're <laughs> against it, like, <laughs> okay, so whatever. You're going to be a teen mom, but they don't want you on birth control? Is it, is it a bad thing? <laughs> I mean, well, that's like against that's against um, re- the religion. So it's like there are some I parts see. of Christianity that's against it, and some parts that aren't. So kind of like the you know like the Duggar family, you know those nineteen kids and counting. There's yeah. a show on TLC. Yeah. Those people are like against it because they think it interferes with nature, and you should have all these kids, and everything should be great. So they're like, a, you're fornicating. B, you're trying to stop yourself from getting pregnant. <laughs> so. <laughs> great so we call my mom so uh then they they wouldn't let me call my mom they refused to let me call my mom so then they're sitting there and they said well we also um we want to let you know that you are you're banned from the lord's table oh so i i was like oh not like i care because i really didn't want to go to school there really any anymore anyways because it was just becoming annoying like other stuff had happened throughout the year that was kind of is kind the of name sketchy. of the school the lord's table no <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> or were they kicking you out of the cafeteria no no so one of the conditions <laughs> one of the conditions to go to um school there is that you had to go to church every sunday well, my mom had an out because she worked on Sundays. So I got stuck going to church every Sunday. And like my grandparents would, my grandparents that went to that church mm-hmm. also went to, um, they would pick me up every Sunday and we would go to church together. So they had communion like every Sunday. So they said, I couldn't do any of that anyways. But, you know, like, communion is really for people that are, like, you know, like, baptized and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wait, wait. So they banned you you from church? They banned me from part. No, I could still go to church, but I, because I needed to repent my sins, Steve. Come on. Right. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure (laughs) out. Like, why would they ban you from someplace that's going to make you better, in their opinion? They told me that I was sinning. Mm-hmm. And then I couldn't partake of the Lord's table. So I could go to church, but I couldn't partake of communion. You know, the uh, bread and yeah, the wine. Yeah. And, yeah, or sometimes if you, you go to church, it's like, a little, it's like a little cracker yeah. or like a little tiny juice. Good well, this church would do juice. like... <laughs> this church this would is, do real wine. <laughs> I assume this is a Catholic school. You could... It's, sure, we'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Maybe a hybrid of sorts. It's kind of a mod podge. <laughs> I mean, it, some of this stuff sounds like Catholicism, like the whole no birth control thing, and yeah, and uh, the whole Lord's table. And com- Catholics are very yep. big communion, but uh, I don't know. It, it's like I went to church when I was young, and this sounds very strange, like very well. Or, the, somebody had orderly. stolen the seventh book of the Bible, so they all, they were trying to put it together with the rest of them. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if that joke makes sense, but I'm going to go with it. Everybody, somebody Google check that for me. <laughs> so so they banned you from, okay, so this is for allegedly, they have a yes. reason to believe. They did not have proof. Right. And I mean, I had attempted to fornicate in the school, but I was never caught. <laughs> <laughs> attempted, never successful. But you were never caught attempting to fornicate. <laughs> I don't want to know. There was never. I don't even know how to even say this. There was never any like, <laughs> like fornication um, did not occur in full. Well, here's the thing. I guess it depends on what your definition of fornication is. Uh oh. Their their definition could just be kissing, oh, or it wow. could be like you're having sex. I mean, I feel like there's like a definite definition of what fornication means. I think it's just I think it I think it is sex, but otherwise wouldn't they, they never... say like relations or something awkward like that? No, that's I think it's just like a we'll just use that as a word just oh. to cover all bases in case anything happened. Oh, so they're like, I know you're doing something, but we don't know what, so they just kinda used a blanket statement to cover everything. Yeah. 
Well, one time I was almost caught in the church balcony because <laughs> because me and this uh, person were upstairs, like in between the pre like in between the church pews, like making out, and that's where like the choir would practice. And there was like all of a sudden a light came on, and we were like, "Oh my gosh!" And it was the reverend. He was in there, but we like snuck out behind the other pews, and he never saw us. <laughs> But it was like this was like a mu this was like a year before this happened though. <laughs> I, again, classic Disney movie. <laughs> this is an amazing story. So they accuse you of fornicating. You ask oh, yeah. for your so mom. The they refuse that. Yeah. So they said you're banned from the Lord's table. You're banned from the Lord's table, and if you continue your actions, you're going to be. Um, uh, you're going to be not be able to attend school anymore. And I said, really? Like, because I was like, oh my gosh, this is my out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I realized it. Like, great. Like, maybe I should call this guy and just come up here and, like, <laughs> make out in the, the lobby. I didn't know. <laughs> okay, so, very tame as to where I thought you were going. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, they they told me all this stuff. They told me basically I was like a bad person. They told me that my mother was a bad mother and that she doesn't have control over me anymore and just, you know, continued on. And so I was wondering how they knew I was on birth control pills because no one knew that. Like there was only a couple people that knew that. My mom, A, she's not going to tell anyone. And one of my friends, the friend who actually told me to, my uncle wanted to see me. Well, I later on found out that it was her who went to them and told them. What? Why did you not that let her cheat I was on, on your birth algebra? Control the, my friend who told me to go see my uncle up in his office. Yeah. She was like my best friend since third grade. She told my, she told like my uncle and the reverend privately, like you, uh, Beth, like Beth is on birth control pills. Was and she, that's what kind was of was she concerned for your soul or was she being catty? Uh, I think she was probably just jealous because she didn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> she was jealous she didn't have birth control. Now I think she just has like I'm friends with her on Facebook and all she has now is like Siamese cats. Oh, so she's so jealous. <laughs> I don't know. Do you do you forgive but, her, Beth? Yeah, I forgive her. That's oh, fine. It's the that's, last furthest thing from my mind. That's important. We're going to tag her in this. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who she is, so just don't say her name. It's fine. <laughs> so I went, um, so I finally got out of there. Like, all right, whatever. I went downstairs and I saw the receptionist and I said, hey, I need to use a phone. And I called my mom. I said, mom, you've got to come over here because, uh, you know, uncle blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah said that I need a you know, that uh, you just need to come here. Like, I don't even think I even told her the reason why. And so she pulled up, like, and, you know, 20 minutes later, and I got in the car, and she's like, what is wrong with you? And I told her, but I was, like, acting really upset about it, but I really wasn't, like, that upset. Like, oh, my gosh, maybe I don't have to go to school here anymore. Like, I was thinking about it. And then my mom, I told her the whole story. She got really mad. And she wrote this, like, long letter to the school telling them, like, exactly what she thought, that they were, like, harassing me and, like, it's totally ridiculous. And then they wrote back with a letter that said, like, I couldn't go to school there anymore. So it worked. Until I did, like, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> like, uh, I had to go to church. I had to do all these, like, special things. And my mom's, like, I think she was more like, I don't have time to be taken back to church. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 and so uh i actually didn't talk to them for like a long period of time and in fact i think it was oh gosh many years later because it was when i was I, th I went to christmas and everyone was there and it was the first time i want to say in like five or six years and everyone was getting these like nice christmas presents and i got a dishcloth Ooh. just Come. No, just a dish cloth. That's all I got. Did it have a psalm on it? <laughs> no, it was. Like, I actually still have it. It's downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you hang it up every Christmas. <laughs> so, 
but I I am friendly with them now. Like we go to weddings and stuff, and they're all like, "Oh, Aunt Beth is here, yay!" And I'm like, "Why do they call me Aunt Beth? Because I'm not an aunt. I'm your, I'm your niece. Why do you call me Aunt Beth?" <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do you think your uncle and pastor were jealous that they weren't on birth no. control? No. <laughs> No, no, I don't oh, think so. Though. Sounds kind of fishy. No, I think that they just like, I think that they thought that my mom was a single mom and I had no dad in my life and they oh. thought every man, every woman, every girl needs a man figure in their life. Like it was that type of mentality, you mm. know, you know, like very patriarchal like women submit i i want to be like a submissive woman type thing it sounds like know? being submissive is what they were worried about i know they only knew what was going on <laughs> 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 but me and the boy ended up breaking up uh i want to say about a year i would say a year later me and said boy broke up so but I wasn't going back to school there. So I had to go to public school for two years. And it really sucked because I was so sheltered for so long that when I went to public school, I was like, oh, my God, there's like a whole nother world out there. Hmm. Well, would it have I been didn't... worse had you have never gone to public school at all? Uh, I mean, your first step yeah. out is in college or in the real world or whatever? Uh, I think that I probably... You know, a lot of people in the school like married each other and stuff mm. so like i don't know maybe i would have been like married off to someone maybe i mean it t to be fair Beth, <laughs> it sounds like you had a much more exciting lifestyle than i did in high school <laughs> you and then kicked out um, of school for fornicating <laughs> but i wasn't actually like there was no witness <laughs> yeah allegedly allegedly <laughs> it's well, all just really, alleged. really your mom got you kicked out of school. Kind of, because she wrote them a nasty letter, and then they wrote a letter back. But I think it was just, I mean, what are they going to do? Like, put, like, a chastity belt on me or something? Mm -hmm. like, you know? past them. What is that Robin Hood movie where they put that belt <laughs> on that woman? It's like Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah, know? yeah, that's a comedy one. They <laughs> put... That steel belt on that woman. That's what I think of when I think about that. <laughs> so that story could definitely be like a uh, like a Disney movie. I can imagine like all the little hijinks and stuff. Like I mean, maybe like a not a Disney movie. Well, well, it's not PG enough. But it's called the Lord's lifetime. Table. <laughs> like lifetime movie. It's a lifetime movie called the Lord's Table. <laughs> Or maybe like an '80s, like teenage, you know, punk movie oh, kind of thing. Teenage rebellion story. Y yeah, that's kind of you know, it, it kind of seems like that. Can you imagine like sneaking out of the uh, chapel with the reverend almost seeing you and stuff, and, and then, then running away, holding hands, and jumping into a car together? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> the kid would have some like badass name, like uh, Tommy uh, Doefinger. <laughs> Don't have it be that name, <laughs> Tommy Doefinger. <laughs> How about uh, Jack Steele? <laughs> it's a little too much. But actually, it makes me think. Steve, you're, you're a pretty well behaved kid. No. no. What? No, you are. Sure. I get in trouble all the time. I've lost my license three times. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. So maybe, like, your sister, you might have a problem mm -hmm. getting kicked out. Maybe. There was this one time. In college, I was uh, a salesman for uh, coupons <laughs> in a coupon book, and uh, I had to go to businesses and try and get them to pay me money to be in our coupon book that we gave out free to all of the college students. So um, the, the rule was, I'm not allowed to take no for an answer, and I was getting paid like nothing. So sometimes I had to choose between uh, spending money to put gas in my car, to drive around, to sell more, to get more money or eating so it was really imperative that i sold things uh great motivation by the way not not being able to eat so i this one place in particular i went to only one time it was a dry cleaner obviously a hot spot for college students mm -hmm. dry, dry cleaning is imperative <laughs> to the college lifestyle 
And I went in and I asked to, to speak with the owner and they happened to, to be doing interviews that day. And I didn't know that. So they're like, oh, yeah, just sit down right there. So I sat down. And then the owner came out to get the next interviewee. And I stood up and I was like, so I, I just was hoping to talk to you real quick about uh, the program that I'm running. Um, I, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And I mentioned the name of it. And he's like, you guys are crooks. And he started, like, yelling at me in front of everybody there. And I was like, okay, and, and what makes you say that? Uh, oh, I know, because I used you guys last year, and last year, you guys just laid the coupon books all over tables, you didn't even give them to students, there were some found in dumpsters, and you guys screwed me out of all my money. I'm like, um, well, sir, I, I can assure you that that is, that is not the intention, and is not something that we're going to be doing. If you will give me five minutes of your time, I am not giving you a goddamn second of my time. Are you next for the interview? Okay, come on in. <laughs> he took somebody <laughs> into it for the next interview. So I sat and waited. And uh, eventually the interview was over and he came back out and, and I stood back up. And he's like, you're still here? I'm like, sir, I promise you just give me five minutes of your time and I will leave and not come back again. If you decide you do not want to listen to me anymore after that. And I, I personally, I think that's extremely reasonable. I'm a college student trying to do my job asking for five minutes. He obviously had five minutes because he was waiting for the next interview person. And he said, no, you're going to leave right now or I'm going to call the cops on you. I'm like, sir, please, just, just give me a couple minutes. And he took out his phone and he called the cops. And he's on the phone with the cops. I'm like, I see you're having a bad day. I'll talk to you later. And I fucking got out of there. And, uh, and then I called my boss and I let him know. I'm like, yeah, I just got the cops called on me. And he's like, oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> he, he really liked that story. So um, I had a ticker in my car of, of yeses and noes. <laughs> and I had to create a new column for got co cops called on me. That That's pretty intense. Yeah. I, def I mean, I definitely got... <laughs> kicked out of there i still won't go back to that cleaner <laughs> the guy would just recognize you i know you <laughs> you tried to sell me that book you got calling the cops wow go i'm calling the cops <laughs> but like it, does that seem a little unreasonable to you i i'm still kind of baffled by it like he's a full-grown well, man like for five you're just asking i just need five minutes five minutes I'm like I would get annoyed personally. I would get very annoyed. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fair. That was my job. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I remember you telling me all these stories about that job, and it didn't seem very fun. No, no, I got, I got told no uh, like thirty times a day. But it was kind of funny because uh, as you're telling me all the you know this crappy stuff with it, you're also like, you know, this is building a skill of getting rejected yeah. over and over again. And when I succeed, it's it's good. And this will help me succeed in the future. You know, it did. It changed my whole perspective on things. That was a great experience. You know, like Beth, um, I have a I have a quick one about school as well. I myself was never kicked out of school or out of a classroom or anything like that. But I once kicked a teacher out of his own classroom. I remember, I, I, do I know the story? I, you know the story because you were in the class. What, oh, man. Okay. We, we were talking about uh, some subject. It was in honors class, which is you read a book and then you talk about the book. Um, we were talking, we read the Bible, we read um, the, the Tao Te Ching, we read a whole bunch of like philosophical books and we read a whole bunch of religious texts. And this time we were reading, um, what's the... What's the Muslim expansion on the Bible? The Quran. Yes, the Quran. We were Quran, reading we yeah. we were reading the Quran and the teacher spent our entire 45 minutes of class ranting about the evils of the uh, eastern culture and like spouting all of this stuff and like one minute before class he's like so does anyone else have anything? And I lost it. I started yelling at him. And I'm like, you just spent our entire time here that we are supposed to be expanding our minds, filling people's heads with absolute bullshit and spewing all of this hatred. And I will not stand for it. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous. You have ruined this entire class and this entire experience that we could have talked about another culture and their beliefs. 
And wow. uh, he he he, should, he sent out an email that night. Should have become an elder. <laughs> <laughs> He sent out an email that night to the class, and he said, "Um, I've thought long and hard about what Steven said today in class and have decided that the next class I will not show so that you guys can have your discussion without without my perspective being polluting you. And he didn't show up for the next class. And I ran the class. You know, as much as the teacher was in the wrong for doing that, him excusing himself from class and when you guys have a discussion was a good thing to do and you know he thought about it too i mean he realized he had a hang up or this um how you say different perspective or Mm. he 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 wasn't doing his job as a teacher ought to you know Mm. they can have perspectives but if they don't properly lead an open discussion and just make it into a you know 45 minute rant that you're paying for I mean, in, if you can recognize that and say, okay, I went wrong here, and that was a problem, here, have an actual discussion, this is my limitation, I mean, that that's kind of, I don't want to say noble, but it, it it's it's better than him just ignoring it and not owning up to anything. Yeah. Well, later I found out that the reason that he wasn't in class is because he had a doctor's appointment because <laughs> he had brain cancer. <laughs> I don't know if that makes it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how that changes it. <laughs> so that he came to like the big assembly with all of the classes. We we had minor classes with specific teachers. We had this specific teacher, and another group of ten students would have this teacher, et cetera, et cetera. But then like the hundred and fifty students who were all in the same program would come together once a week for a big assembly. And he was talking at that assembly and actually talked about how his students asked him not to show up to class. He obliged, and then he, like, took off his, his cap. He wore, like, this fancy little wide-brimmed cap. He took it off, and he had, like, all these electrodes attached to his brain, and he was wearing a battery pack. And like, What? He's like, yeah, so I just found out I have brain cancer. And I'm like, oh, fucking A. <laughs> the one time I take a noble stand, <laughs> it's, a, it's a guy with brain cancer. Yeah, I remember that. He, he's like, uh, they're monitoring everything right now. I got hooked up to this little thing right here on my on my hip, and it's like yeah, okay. I quickly went from hero to villain, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you do a, a turn. That's how you do a a heel turn like a professional wrestler, and that's the time I kicked a cancer patient out of his own classroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that 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 that's uh. I, I don't know if we can really like. Uh, well, you uh, know, Nate, yeah. there is there is one place that you'll never get kicked out of, and that's our Facebook page, where you can follow us at the We Need to Talk Show. Well, let's, let's not falsely advertise. I mean, if you start posting ISIS stuff on there, we're gonna kick you out. Hey, listen, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you could also try our Twitter if you'd like <laughs> at WNTT One. We also have a Patreon. Where you can follow us, and if you'd like, you can donate, or you can just check out our content there for free. See, we can't kick you out of donating, because that wouldn't make any sense. You're giving us money, and money is great, because it supports <laughs> us and what we do. Money is We great. won't accept your money. <laughs> we won't accept your money. Wait, yes, we will. Uh, we also accept Bitcoin. If you want to send me some Bitcoin, send me that. Litecoin, Ethereum, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Get those cryptocurrencies in our crypto accounts. Uh, even popcorn. We'll accept popcorn. Well, for the next three weeks, we will. Then we won't anymore. What? What? Why not? Nate, we need to talk. You want to do like a little end of the end of the.